Pole. I mean, you would think someone that well known and respected, they would be listened to. But they wouldn't just, you know, tune them out like that. But I've seen many examples of it. Admiral Byrd, for one. Oh, absolutely. That's that's how this knowledge filtering process mm-hmm. operates, and you see it time and time again. Um, where, in, in this particular case, yeah, you know, there was a more influential scientist in Washington working at the Smithsonian Institution. His name was William Holmes. He was an anthropologist there. So using his position of power and influence, he said, you know, if this Dr. Whitney out there in California had understood the theory of human evolution, he wouldn't have published his report. In other words, if the facts did not support the theory of evolution, then those facts had to be put aside, and that's exactly what happened. Reality so, doesn't matter. It's just what we want reality to fit into our system. Yes, that that happens. That That is something that definitely happens. It happens not just in archaeology, but it happens in all kinds of different scientific fields. It happens in politics. It happens in all different types of areas. So, so if now... If it just happened once or twice in this field of archaeology, that would, you know, maybe you could say, well, yeah, there's, they've made a couple mistakes. There's a couple anomalies there. But, you know, 99.9% of the facts support the theory that's being taught in the schools. But it didn't happen just one or two times. It happened hundreds of times. There's, there was enough information to fill up a 900-page book. Forbidden Archaeology is 900 pages long. It has hundreds of these cases from the scientific literature. Uh, The case of, uh, for example, a scientific journal called The Geologist that published a report in the year 1862 that a human skeleton was found 90 feet below the surface of the ground in Macoupin County in the state of Illinois. And the skeleton, it was like that of a modern human being, according to the medical doctors who examined it. And directly above the skeleton was a thick layer of slate rock, completely sealing it off from the surface. So according to geologists of the state of Illinois, the age of the layer of rock in which the skeleton was found is about 300 million years old. So... And you've got hundreds of these discoveries, and they're going on right up to the present day, although sometimes we don't hear very much about them. So, what are the most, what what is the most, or, or, or one of the most dramatic or startling pieces of evidence uncovered that proves modern man has been around longer than suspected? Well, I think the most interesting thing, the most substantial thing, is that there are hundreds of these cases, not just one or two, but uh, there are, I mean, one very interesting case has to do with some round metallic objects that were found by miners in South Africa. They're about one or two inches in diameter. They're made of a naturally occurring iron, type of iron called hematite. And the most interesting feature is the parallel grooves that go around the center of these objects. Now, these objects were shown on an NBC television special called The Mysterious Origins of Man. Before NBC would agree to show them, they said they had to be given to an independent company of metallurgists to examine them. So that was done. They were given to an independent company company of metallurgists, and they said they could see, they could not explain how they could have formed naturally in the layers of the earth which is very interesting because that means they had to have been made by someone, someone with human-like intelligence. But these round metallic objects are found in layers of solid rock about 2 billion years old. That's a billion with a B, not million. So that's pretty astonishing. But for me, it's not any particular case that is so astonishing. What is really astonishing to me is that you've got hundreds of these cases. You know, when I, years ago, when I first started the research for that book, Forbidden Archaeology, I thought, okay, maybe I'll do eight weeks of research. I'll find a few interesting facts. I'll write some short article about it. 
and then I'll go on to something else. But those eight weeks of research turned into eight months, and then the eight months turned into eight years because one case just led to another. It was very amazing, and that was the most shocking thing to me, not that there were one or two exceptional cases, but that there were hundreds of them that aren't mentioned in the textbooks. Yes, now these hematite balls, uh, I, I saw a picture on Coast, and uh, I, I don't remember if I I don't remember if I saw it in the in the NBC special or not, but uh, those those balls seem to and the, and there was a another uh, object that seemed like a cup that the balls fit down into some kind of a receptacle or bowl shaped object. Are you, are you familiar with that? Uh, that one I'm not familiar with. I know there have been cup shaped objects found in coal mines things like that. Like right, that. In, in the in the photo that's on Coast to Coast, uh, when you were a, a former appearance that you made on there, it has it has a photograph of these these uh, hematite balls, and, and in, in the photo there's also one object that's not a ball, but it's rather a, a, a like a cup cup formation. And we and the, the reason I bring yeah, this up... Yeah, I have up, to see that particular photograph. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't recall it right. The now. reason I bring it up is because it reminded me of... Uh, we, we had a... Uh, an interesting guest that had found an object in in a well in Kentucky, or or gotten it from someone who had found it in a well in Kentucky, and it was uh, uh, looked really similar to those uh, uh, to to the to the material that those balls look they were made out of. But you know, I, I don't really know. Well, that's very interesting. Of course, I learn something new every day. Right. A lot of times, I learn things from uh, listeners to radio shows like this who who hear me and call some things to my attention so right uh, I'll, I'll send you the photos of those uh, ob that object and uh, give you the oh background. well that would be really good thank you yeah uh it's uh now um i want i want to backtrack here just a little bit because i want to i want to be clear on the on the uh devolution am i pronouncing that right is it de-evolution or devolution it. De devolution devolution okay devolution devolution i guess it pronounce it like that. Okay, some devolution. people say de-evolution, but it's uh, it's actually spelled with one e. Devolution. Right. Devolution. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the devil gets no credit for this. <laughs> oh, that would be an interesting one. Devolution. <laughs> devolution. Yeah. <laughs> the Darwinian theory of devolution. Uh, yeah. that, they're already trying to put <laughs> horns on your head, so <laughs> maybe okay. you should quit while you're ahead. But no, what I was going to uh, ask you, uh, you say that the. Uh, we, in other words, we are spirit beings. Our, our our essence, our soul or spirit body that's within us, is the real essence of us, and we we became into matter from that state. In other words, yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. We're that just originally... mired in flesh now, and and the, the the we were. It's when these spirit bodies become covered uh, by lower energies of mind and matter. I think is how you put it. Yes. And uh, okay, so my question is. Uh, can the process be reversed? Yes, absolutely. And I think that's the real purpose of human life, from which we become distracted uh, by those who want to focus our attention on matter so that we just devote ourselves completely to the production and consumption of more and more material things. And and that process generates so much wealth that flows into the pockets of different people. You know, for example, you've got all the scientists who are making all these inventions of different weapons and drugs and consumer products. Yeah, you know, they get a lot of money for doing that. And then the corporations that sell all these uh, weapons and consumer products and drugs and things like that they get a lot of money and then the government gets a lot of money by taxing all this stuff so it's a it's a pretty good deal yeah. you know for those who are benefiting from it so they they like to see everybody just uh with their nose to the grindstone just concentrating on uh, producing and consuming more and more material things and ignoring every other aspect of human life I think we've seen the cost of that. I think we've seen the environmental destruction. I think we've seen a lot of the, the conflict that goes on on all different levels in society, individually, collectively, uh, that goes on as a result of that. And I think there are forces in society today that don't want 